Today I'm going to show you how to knit a mid-size shoulder purse using a circular knitting machine. If you make this bag, please tag me on social media when you share your work, at Dinah Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest. In terms of sizing, the purse measures approximately 11 inches wide by 6 and 3 quarters inches tall, which makes it the perfect size to fit your phone, wallet, and a couple of other small items. I'm going to show you every step of the process in this video, but if you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase a printable download of the pattern in my shop linked below. I'm going to show you how to make this bag with a zipper, but if you prefer not to sew, you can easily change the pattern to a button closure if you prefer to skip that step. There are lots of ways to customize this bag. You could knit an eye cord for the handle, you could crochet the handle, or you could go with a longer handle and have the bag sit closer to the hip. You could add an embellishment to the front, embroider a name, or line the inside of the bag with fabric. In terms of timing, it took me about 30 minutes of knitting and about an hour to seam and assemble the bag and sew the zipper, for a total of about an hour and 30 minutes. But we all go at different speeds, so the project time will vary from person to person. I have lots more fun, quick and easy knitting patterns coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date when I release my videos. And if you'd like to check out my knitting machine books, templates, and patterns, visit dianalevinknits.com. The techniques I'm going to walk you through today include casting on and casting off a knitting machine using scrap yarn, grafting the sides of a knitting machine tube, seaming with the mattress stitch, and sewing in a zipper. All the supplies I'm using today are linked in the description below. For this project, I'm using a 46 needle Addy Express king size knitting machine, but you can easily use the Centro 48 needle machine for the pattern instead. You can follow all the same directions, your bag will just end up a bit taller than the purse you see in the video. I'm using loops and threads impeccable yarn in the color Cherry, and I'll also be using a crochet hook, a darning needle, a pair of scissors, a sewing kit, pins, stitch markers, two one inch gold rings, a purse handle, an eight inch zipper, and a knitting tag. Step one is knitting the bag. To begin, cast onto your knitting machine using scrap yarn. Wrap your yarn around the first needle and then weave the yarn back and forth along all the needles until the end of the row. Then place your yarn into the tensioner. If you're using an Addy, hold the yarn in your hand to provide tension. And if you're using a Centro, place your yarn into the middle tensioner. Next, knit five rows in the scrap yarn. The color of the scrap yarn doesn't matter because we'll be removing this yarn at the end of the project, but it's helpful to choose a color that contrasts well with your main color, which will help when we graft the sides together. When you finish five rows, cut a tail a few inches long in the scrap yarn and throw it into the middle of the machine right before the first needle. Then leave a really long tail in the main color and throw it in the middle of the machine right next to the scrap yarn tail. Set your counter back to zero before you begin knitting. Hold the two yarn tails close and low as you slowly knit your first few stitches. Go slowly for the first couple of rows and then you can gradually pick up the speed. We left a long yarn tail in the main color because we'll need to use a long tail when we graft the sides of the tubes and when we seam the bottom of the bag. For my bag, I'm going to knit 110 rows in the main color. The number of rows you knit will determine the width of the bag. So if you prefer a longer zipper, you'll knit more rows. If you prefer a shorter zipper, you'll knit less rows. A quick note about tension. Tension can vary from person to person and yarn to yarn, so if you have a different tension than me, your piece might end up a little bit longer or shorter. In a project like this, when you're fitting a particular size zipper, it's important to follow the dimensions of the pattern, not necessarily the row count. For this bag, you'll want to knit a piece that's approximately 10.5 to 11 inches wide after it's grafted, which will give you enough room for the rings and the zipper. You might also notice that I'm using both the machine counter and a hand counter. I haven't had any issues with my machine counter, but I like using both because it gives me some peace of mind that I have an accurate row count as I'm working. When your work starts to touch the table, bring the knitting up inside the machine. Okay, I just finished knitting 110 rows in my main color. Next, I'll cut another really long yarn tail and throw it in the middle of the machine before the first needle. Then I'll switch back to the scrap yarn and hold the yarn tails together close and low as I slowly start knitting the scrap yarn. Knit five rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish, cut a short tail and continue knitting until the work falls off the needles. Pull the work out of the machine and gently stretch out the stitches. Here I have my final piece, which measures approximately 22 inches long, although it's hard to get a perfectly accurate measurement when the scrap yarn is still attached. Next, we'll move on to step two, grafting the open sides of the tubes together. Bring the open ends of the tube together and line up the top rows of main color stitches. Thread the bottom yarn tail onto a darning needle. Begin with the stitch directly above the yarn tail. Thread your needle down through the first stitch and then up through the stitch to the left. I'll show you a close up of how I'm working through the stitch here. Pull the yarn through. Then go back down to the stitch below and go down through the first stitch and then up through the stitch to the left. I'll show you a close up of how I'm working through the bottom stitch here and pull your yarn through. 
When you go to the top, you'll be working through the stitch that you came up through previously. Go down through that stitch and then up through the next stitch to the left. I'll show you a close up of that stitch here. Pull your yarn through. Then when you go back down to the bottom, you'll be working through the stitch that you came up from previously. Go down through that stitch and then up through the next stitch to the left. Here's a close up of how I'm working that stitch. Continue in this pattern alternating between top and bottom stitches. Here you'll see the stitches starting to form. As you work, make sure to pull the yarn firmly, but not too tightly, otherwise your stitches will look too small. When you get to the edge, simply turn the work inside out and continue in the same pattern until the end of the row. Here you'll see what it looks like when you're about halfway through grafting the tube. When you get to the last couple of stitches, make sure you're picking up every last stitch, and then tie a quick knot between the two yarn tails to secure the end. Step 3 is removing the scrap yarn. When you graft stitches together, you'll remove the scrap yarn by unwinding it around and around the tube. One side should pull off pretty easily. For the side that's more of a challenge, identify the top length of yarn and pull that one length out every few stitches until the end of the row. After that length is removed, the rest of the scrap yarn should pull off much more easily. Here you can see the final seam. I actually grafted my stitches a bit too tightly in this project, so my seam is slightly visible. But once I move the seam to the side of the work, you really won't notice it at all. Now we'll move on to step four, seaming the bottom of the bag. We'll be using the mattress stitch to seam the bottom of the bag. If your yarn tails aren't on the edge, thread whatever tail is longer onto a darning needle and weave it to the bottom right corner of the bag and secure it with a quick knot. When I use the mattress stitch, my first step is to identify the two lines of V-shaped stitches running in the same direction that I want to bring together. For my bag, here are the two lines I want seamed right next to each other. Next, I'll look for the little bars directly next to those lines of stitches, shown here. These are the stitches I'll be working through as I use the mattress stitch. I like to pull the work together using stitch markers, placing markers on the stitches directly below the bars I'll be working through. To do the mattress stitch, alternate between threading through one bar on the top, followed by one bar on the bottom, and repeat back and forth until the end of the row. As you're working, take care to make sure that you're following the exact same line the entire way through. Sometimes the work will want to twist, so keep double checking that you're staying within the same line of stitches. Planning the work in advance with the stitch markers will help with this a lot. Remove the stitch markers as you approach them and continue seaming until the end of the row. When you get to the end of the row, make sure to capture all the last few stitches so you don't end up with a hole in the corners of your work. And then thread the yarn through to the inside corner. Secure the yarn with a few good knots and then weave in the ends to the center area of the work and trim the ends. We're done using the yarn tails to seam, so you can repeat the same process with the other tail, securing with a knot and weaving in the ends. You'll see that the mattress stitch has created a fairly seamless looking join. Our bag is starting to come together. Next step is step 5, adding the rings. I'm using circular rings, but you can also use D-shaped rings for this part of the project. Cut a length of yarn in the main color and place your ring to the side inside the bag. Thread your yarn starting on the inside of the bag and then go back and forth one or two stitches down from the top to secure the ring in place. As you sew, make sure that the stitches you're going through on the outside of the work are the interior bars of the stitches not going over the outside stitches. This will create a more seamless look. When your ring is secure, thread the needle back to the inside of the bag, secure the two yarn tails with a knot, and then weave in and trim the ends. Repeat the process on the other side of the bag with the second ring. Step six is adding a knitting tag. This step is optional, but I like to add a tag to all my work. Normally I add it at the very end, but since I'll be sewing in a zipper, I'm gonna add my tag before I begin sewing. Step seven is sewing in the zipper. Locate where you'd like to sew in your zipper and use pins to keep it in place. Find a thread in roughly the same color as your main color yarn and thread it onto a sewing needle with two threads and tie a few knots at the bottom of the thread. Begin under the inside of the zipper so that your knot will be hidden and start to sew the zipper right to the top of the work. I'll show you a close up here of where I'm threading the needle through. If you're using a knitting tag like mine, sew right up until the tag and then weave the thread through just the zipper fabric until the end of the tag and then continue sewing right next to the tag. Continue until the end of the row, removing the pins as you get near them. If you'd like a stronger seam, you can also consider using the back stitch. Just like earlier, make sure that when you're sewing the outside stitches, work the thread through the interior bars, not going over the outside stitches, to create a seamless look. When you reach the end of the row, unzip the zipper and use pins to secure it in place to the other side. Continue sewing until the end of the zipper, and when you're done, secure the thread with a knot on the inside of the bag. For a more secure zipper, repeat the process one more time to sew a row at the bottom of the fabric like this. If you end up with any extra room around the zipper, you can use your main color yarn to add a few stitches over that area of the zipper. The last step is to add your handles. 
I ordered these handles online and I'll link below to the set of handles I purchased, but you can use many different styles of handles. Or you could create your own handles using knitting or crocheting. Our purse is complete. If you make this bag, please tag me when you share your work on social media at Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase a printable PDF of this pattern in my shop linked below. If you'd like to check out any of my knitting machine books, templates, and patterns, visit dianalavinenits.com. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my latest patterns and tutorials.